Good afternoon. I'm here today to show you how to make these little paper clay birds. Um, very simple and fun to make. Great project and um, inexpensive as well. So the material I'm going to be using is called Creative Paper Clay. You can get this at, um, oh, what is the name of the, anyway, big craft stores. Um, you can find it on Amazon, Creative Paper Clay Modeling Material. So on the birds, the part that's paper clay is the body. The legs are wire covered with paper, in this case, the wings are paper, and then there's various decorative elements added, but the paper clay portion is the body, and the head, of course. On this one, same thing, paper clay for the head and body. The tail I've put on with is paper, and the wings are paper as well. Now, paper clay air dries. There's no need to bake it or anything like that. However, and that's great. However, the one downside is that it dissolves in water. So when you're done with your piece, you need to seal it um, to make it more permanent. The other thing about paper clay is that it, it um, if you have too thick of a piece of clay, when it dries, it might crack. So I like to try not to have a very thick lump of clay. And so I begin my pieces with a core made of foil. And I'll just show you, it's so simple to do. For these sides birds, I would take a strip of foil that's about six inches wide and just crumple it up in an approximate, hmm, I guess you'd say kind of a pear shape, a little thinner where the head's going to be and a little thicker head where the body's going to be body. So I already have some open. If I don't have enough here, I'll have to open this other package, but hopefully we'll have enough for this beginning step. So it's... Um, quite soft, um, pliable, and what I'm going to begin doing is just pressing out an oval shape, like so, and I'm going to wrap that around my foil base. Now this clay I've just had it sitting in um, plastic wrap for maybe about a week and it's gotten a little bit dry. You can see it's sort of cracking. So um, bear with me. I forgot something I need. I need some water. Just a sec. All you need to do is dip your fingers in water, run it across the clay, and it will soften it up again. So, as you can see, I'm just pushing the clay around over that form, um, smoothing out this drier area that was starting to get a little crumbly and crackly. I need more water there. Um, and it's just very simple process, nothing complicated. Here I have some foil sticking out on this side, so I'm going to push some of the clay over it and just keep working it. As far as the crumply stuff goes, um, you can also sand it when it's dry, so it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect but but the best you can do at this stage the better because then you'll have fewer problems later on so when I compare it to ick, my hands are all icky 
to this one, I can see that I got quite a bit bigger. Um, that would only matter if I were trying to make a set, but I am going to take some of this clay off and wrap it in the foil again. For this bird, I'm going to make one of these. I like the tall ones that are sitting way up on the long legs, so I'm beginning to see that I want to turn the head down, which I do. See, now I'm getting kind of a head body look here. And now I'm starting to feel like I'm holding a little bird in my hand and developing her little shape. I'm going to take some clay from the front more to the back for a little tail, just a little stump. pretty close, I think, to what I want. You know, you need the basic shape, but, and the basic shape does give it personality, but in the end, it's the painting and the decoration and so on. So, um, I think I'm pretty good with this. All right. Now, actually, I'm going to lengthen the neck a little bit. You see, I'm just smoothing it with my thumb as I go. All right, now I'm going to turn it head down a little bit. And I'm going to pull out, actually, hands. sometimes your hands get too sticky with the combination of the when you put them in water and then put them on the clay sometimes it gets a little sticky and then the clay starts sticking to your hand so I'm going to pull out the beak It's important to keep turning it around so you see all the different sides. 3D piece should look good from all sides. Um, the point's a little severe. Actually, what I'm running into here is the really sticky clay. So I think it's a good idea to stop fussing so much. Okay, there's the bird body and head, basically. And now the thing I have to do before I let this dry is put on some eyes. And for eyes, I use black glass beads. If you look on a website like um, Fire Mountain Gems or any of the art beads, any of the other um, bead websites, these will be referred to probably as Druck glass Druck beads, D-R-U-K. 
And the size I'm using here is four millimeter. So you see, I just stuck the bead on the end of the toothpick. Where is the hole? There it is. Oh. And pressed it in. Malfunction there. Pressed it in from the side. The toothpick, the impression of the toothpick gives this little indentation at the front of the eye. However, I like the way I've got this one. This one's going straight forward to the point of the beak. This one is skewed. So I'm just going to smooth that clay. And then do the indentation again. Another nice thing to do, detail at this point, is to show the separation of the upper and lower bill. So that's just a little line you can press with your toothpick. There we have him. Little bird. Um, this needs to dry overnight. It's a little rougher than I would like it, and that's because I was using that kind of dried out clay. But I can actually fix it by, um, when this is dry, I can take some more clay, and if I care about it, it's not really going to show that much. And um, put another piece of clay over it and smooth it out. If I wanted to, could make a couple little indications of where I think the legs are going to be. But this is it for stage one. Um, time for him to dry. And then on to the next step.